So, we were discussing about uh, representing the two values. We are moving from one single value, two values, three values, and so on. And uh, we saw that uh, in some cases, having two values is a good idea to arrange the data in a circular fashion for two reasons. One is that you can have, you can make clear some repetitive pattern, something, pattern, something that happens the same day, the same hour, and so on, like here, we discussed that yesterday. Here is, is, is the same, but it's less effective. But the point is exactly the same. You are looking to the same period of the month, or the year, sorry, across different and this is one, one reason. Okay, let me be back uh, the speaker again. Please remote uh, mute your microphone unless you want to go for uh, asking a question. But there is also another good reason to save room. Here, the time is one of, of the two um, attributes. So you have a long line, long temporal line. But this, this uh, circular fashion is not intended to put a similar period together. It is, uh, it is not that. The problem is, no, not the problem. The, the idea is to have more room for the data. And there are a lot of variation on this idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I will show you some, something of them. Here we have an example about a very hot topic, the change of temperature in the, in, in, in the world. And we are reporting some data from, let's say, 1850-2016. And looking at this visualization, what is wrong with it? Try to, to go for a bigger screen. The idea is that this uh, image should show uh, the increasing change in temperature across the years. What is wrong with it? And here the, the circular fashion is uh, both for having uh, the same month on the radial sector and to save room because we are representing data from uh, a lot of years. Mm -hmm. 150 years uh, represented here. What is wrong with it? Less one point for the exam. Not uh, doing this error will cost you one, one point less. You, yeah, maybe yes. But I mean, there is a color there hmm? going from yellow to blue. Doesn't mean that color. The meaning of the color is not clear to me. It's not clear the, the scale of the color. Please put a legend on the image. I want to know what is the meaning of yellow or green and blue. Each time you have, uh, you are using color to encoding something, you must add a legend. This is the first point. The other point is that uh, it is not clear uh, how can I look for uh, intermediate years. If I want to go for, uh, is the color encoding uh, the year? Is the color encoding uh, the, the temperature? I don't know. I suppose the year because the, it is going from year to year, but it's very hard to get, uh, if it, that's the case, I think, yes. Um, it is really hard to get, let's say, 1950. What is 1950 here? Hmm? So while you get uh, the impression that, uh, I don't know, 
this is a decreasing increasing of temperature I, also that is not clear i suppose that the, now we are warmer than the past this is the the, the, the common understanding of the story but i don't see it so uh, this uh, visualization does a very good usage of uh, of the space but maybe maybe this something missing because they're just reporting from piece of it from a, a larger environment hmm? but uh, it's not clear however it's clear the the goal save room let's move to another idea it is uh, interesting for other reasons it is called the linked histograms with brushing assume that we have we are back to talk about uh, uh, bedrooms a price we are talking about houses hmm? among the attributes of the houses we have the price of the house and the number of bedrooms how we can put together on a scatter plot we know that of course hmm? we saw that and there is a sort of uh, a correlation in that with outliers you maybe you remember the image but this is another another solution that has some advantages that i, I will clarify what is the idea? It is that uh, I take the price on this axis, I take the number of bedrooms on this axis in parallel, and each box, each, each square, is representing a single house. Hmm? It, is, it is a frequency distribution. It is an histogram. We, we have a, an interval in price from year to year, from year to year, year we, have, we have some bills. In it. And here you have a, the number of houses that belong in that interval. This is low price, this is high price. And this is a high number, little number of bedroom, high number of bedroom. And you can see how many houses. In this case, is each single block is exactly one house. Hmm? And uh, they are connected. This house is this house. But you can get that just by interaction. If you select this, you select this. They are the same. This house is in a middle price somehow, and it is a very high number of bedrooms. And if you select here an interval, okay, I am interested in these houses that are in this range of price, whatever it is. We will have this scattered situation around. These houses correspond to this one. And it is a good uh, idea to, let's say, uh, put down all of them in this way, having this uh, represented. So it is easier to understand the number of answers that you have. These houses satisfy this price, and these houses are the same that we are here in red. So the histogram are connected together. And the idea is that uh, you can uh, put some condition on it, having this, the, the results uh, reduced. Even here, the, the task might be to select a house. So you start putting some condition on the price. You observe the situation about the bedrooms. And you can put some condition on the bedroom, and so on, restricting your, your, your interval. Uh, I will be back that with the, with this example with a with a more uh, complex uh, uh, situation. But what is the advantage of this? With the spec that we saw before, a simple scatter plot. Oof, no, it's not here. But maybe you remember it, in which you you can plot the the, the here you have two two attributes. You can plot them on a scatter plot. It is very easy to have them on a scatter plot. We do to X and Y. You can see that it is a trend among them, and so on. Is that this solution scales to a larger number of attributes? You can have five, say six, seven histograms, one for each attribute. You can combine them. I will show you that. Another solution. For having, remember, our goal here is to have two attributes, two values, is to have a, a semantic zoom. 
Here we have a collection of items. We discussed it when we were discussing about the distribution of the data. And you see how they are arranged about the price. We are talking about uh, cars now. If you zoom in, you see a better resolution of, of, of the range of the price, but some new data appears. This is the meaning of semantic zoom. And you have a, together, close to the, to the dot, you have the, the maker of, the, of that car, particular car. So this is a way to get a second attribute. Here we have a, another solution in which we have a, a, something that uh, is drawn on the screen. So you have uh, elements. Here we have a transistor. And you can encode some numerical value, visual. Hmm? It may be the, the voltage difference in that point. And you can uh, observe. Uh, this is the source of, of, the, of, of the power. You, you, you can see um, where you have the maximum difference of voltage or, or minimum and, and so on. And the same can be done using ad, other values. For instance, here we have this fun, funny visualization of, of the world. Basically, you are reporting for each uh, country the number of inhabitants. Hmm? You have the world. You, you can put a, a number of it, or you can use a color to represent the density of population. Mm -hmm. So you have the location plus another number, this is the density of population. And here we have a, a distorted map in which the size of a country is driven by the number of inhabitants, by the density of people there. And you, you can see that uh, the Canada uh, has been the, disappeared in this plot. And also the Australia, that is, is going to be very, very little. Mm -hmm. That give you the, the information about uh, the number of inhabitants, the density, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, but in my <laughs> opinion, people do not like this kind of maps. I see your eyes that it will be because we are so familiar with this. And maybe that they, leaving to the color, here there is a legend. You cannot read it, but you have a legend here. And I, I, brown means uh, uh, low density, while uh, purple, like India, means high density of inhabitants. This is, a, this is a, I mean, this is a, the, here there is an advantage in the sense that you perceive it, the bigger, the more. This is quite clear. Instead of to associate a color to the density, you must reason on, on a legend. So this is a more immediate to be perceived, but it's in contrast to your knowledge. You, you, yeah, before I, me too, I was fooled by the map. I was looking for Canada, I was not, Canada is here. Canada is so big in the, in the reality. Hmm? And the same that's for Australia. Australia is, is a, a very little, little square here. However, distortion in any case is a good point. Uh, if you using distortion are going to violate something that is a well known by user, that may be dangerous because you perceive that in a, in a, in a wrong way. Okay. All of them are solutions for, for, let's say, encoding two values. Let's go to the third step. What about three values? A simple data set having three numbers for each tuple. A very straightforward idea is to use a three-dimensional scatter plot. Why not? You are, we, are, we, we live in a 3D uh, space. We can use X, Y, and Z, as we do for maths or whatever. And if you have a price, time, and bedrooms, where times means the working time to the, next, to the closest um, um, underground stop. For each house, you have the price, the number of bedrooms, and it, at the time, working time to the closest underground stop. So three attributes, three numbers. 
Why don't put them on three axes, two dimensional axes? But uh, that, that uh, it, it is easy to understand, but it's not easy to use. For instance, look at this. Consider A and B. Which one has the higher price? The perspective of the drawing makes that complex. And uh, also here, uh, we will show that uh, running. Uh, there is another problem. We have, you have occlusion. You don't see the point behind. 3D, three-dimensional data, three-dimensional visualization, at uh, a golden time, golden period in, in uh, let's say, 2000. Because the power of, and a little bit before, because the power of, of, of the computers, the resolution on the screen, were able to produce a realistic and impressive, a quick 3D visualization. But uh, if you go to play a 3D game, interacting with it is still a, a problem. You have to rotate the screen, you have zoom in, zoom out, uh, you have occlusion. In the end, all the attempt to, to use 3D in visualization decreased along the time. Nowadays, no one, apart very few carefully designed solutions, use 3D. No one goes in this direction because the problem of perspective and occlusion. I don't say that you have not to use, but you have, you have to use it in a very careful situation. One thing, one, one situation in which 3D is still interesting is when you are depicting something that is real. If you want to see the, the, the internal part of the human body, for instance, 3D is, 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 is a good idea because that gives you perspective. Even if there is a, a nice result that I, I saw in a conference a long time ago, it was exactly about reproducing in 3D the heart and, and, and the and the blood, the blood circulation around it to, to get some uh, restriction there that are suspicious for uh, having a, a, a disease to the, to the heart. And uh, someone proposed a 2D, a, a B-dimensional visualization of that, that was more effective for doctors because doctors do, during, after, the death of a patient doing an autopsy, they take the heart around, and they put the, the heart on, on, on the table, and they open the, 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 the blood, the, the blood streets on the table, and they have a 2D vision of that. So in that case, they demonstrated that the moving from 3D to 2D was closer to the mind of the doctors. And, and the, the, the quantity of right analysis were eager in that, in, the, in that situation. But apart from this case, forget 3D, unless you are in very specific cases. And uh, you can try to overcome some limitation in 3D. For instance, yeah, there is a solution we implemented in our system a long time ago. If you have this point, you cannot read the coordinates on this point. From perspective issue. If you click on it and you draw the, some orthogonal lines to the coordinates, you can read the x, y, and z values. But this is still not intuitive. So forget 3D. Even if I will be back with a prototype, an old one from <coughs> our research group to demonstrate something. A very common solution is to produce a SPLOM. What is a SPLOM? It's a scatter plot matrix. It's a matrix of scatter plot. You take the dimension of your data set, three in this case, and you plot all the pairwise combinations. Hmm? Price with time, time with bedrooms, price with bedrooms, all the possible combinations. And in this way, you can look for a correlation among pairs of attributes, you reduce your, your inspection from N3 values to three couples or two values. 
And again, we have a, a duplication of the data. This is a house A is here, is here, and is here. Again, some brushing technique will help in, in this story. What is the advantage of this? I'll show you. Okay, here we there is the idea of the brushing. You can brush on a specific scatter plot, and the other uh, corresponding items are highlighted as well. So you can see how they are put in, in the other scatter plots. And be back to the example we saw before. The, that example was about the books. The three attributes of, of the books were, were the price of the book in red, the year of publication in blue, and in, in green, the editor. It, it is categorical. If you take the, this data set, three-dimensional data set, and you plot it on uh, three scatter plots. This is the idea of SPOM. Hmm? In this case, we have only three. In general, they, they are uh, n power two uh, combinations, hmm? n by n less one by two, to be precise. Still a lot in any case. If you observe the single pairwise com combination, you can come up with some insight very quickly. For instance, this is a, the year. We are talking about the book. Most of the book are in the last years. There are around a few old books. Concerning the, the editor, the distribution seems to be more or less were distributed. There is no, no, no winner here. And if you, we compare again uh, the year, we see that the also editor are somehow spreading on the same period, but this editor has a very old book. So the analysis, uh, analyze the data using pairs of attributes is a powerful mean because you discover, you discover a relationship, relation between two attributes at time, and you discover, oh, okay, we have only new books. The distribution of, of the editor is more or less the same. Uh, it, this is the price with respect to the price, but here we have an outlier. Here we have a very expensive book. And uh, it, Concerning the time, most of the editors are in, 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 a, in a new space, but some of them are publishing old books. And this is something that you cannot get from here. If you go to the 3D uh, visualization, that information is not available in an easy way. The other way around, this is representing all the data and you can try to get uh, three variate relationship, that is very hard. So this is a, a very common solution, SPLOM, scatterplot matrix. And in that prototype, there is no implementation of a brushing. So you, could, you, you see this book here, you can select it, but you don't see which one, where it, it, the, his copies are. Hmm? This book is, pre is present three times here like in this example. Without brushing and linking, you cannot get this information. Another effective idea is to reach a bidimensional scatter plot with other attributes. For instance, here we, have, uh, we are representing three values, X value, y value and the dimension of the point is representing a third value. So we are representing a three-dimensional data set on the bidimensional scatter plot. In particular, this scatter plot is uh, reporting the, the failure of a, of a product, let's say a monitor, a computer, whatever, it doesn't matter. The, the report is about a different uh, uh, 
production time. This is July 97, September 97, and so on, till May 98. So this is somehow categorical in this way, because it's representing a precise moment of time. And each dot is representing the notion of failure after some months in service. For instance, here we have in, in May 98, after two months of usage, we got four failures. After that, we, get, we got nothing for a long period. And after, after one year, we got three failures. And the same around, you can see that uh, in November 97, something was really wrong. Because every two months, we got two or, or four failures. This is quite effective, even if uh, I am a little bit against uh, two things. One thing is uh, the zero failures are not represented. I am not able to estimate this, these four failures, how much they are relevant with respect to which number of elements. Hmm? And uh, representing the size of the circle is not a good idea. Hmm? I, I mean, uh, in, even if they are re really quite uh, separated uh, as a dimension. However, this is, here we are representing uh, three values on a bidimensional scatter plot. And here we have uh, the, sum, the example from the books in which we have the, the publisher. Here we have the here. And the, the color is representing the price. You can see here there is a red is pretentive. Maybe you really see it even on the screen. Here we have a very expensive book in red. Most of the books are blue, low price, something in the middle, yellow. And this, this color scale is wrong. I said to you that the rainbow scale is not a good idea. This image comes from a prototype of 2000, let's say 20 years ago. And we did that mistake. Our group at that time was not so smart in using colors. Or you can add some visual attribute on a, on a dimensional space. This is a typical map, you know this idea. A circle is representing a town, and the size of the circle is representing the number of inhabitants. Or here, <clears throat> this is a nice story. We have a, a, a frequency selector from a low frequency to high frequency. And you can see which components of the circuit are sensible to the actual frequency. Um, here you have an inductance that, that is not, has no relevance for a low frequency and, and, and so on. Here we have a capacitor. And you're moving this slider from low frequency to high frequency, you can see this bubble changing size, giving you the, the, <clears throat> the relevance of that. I, I have an old fashioned movie about that. Maybe I will show you next time. For, for showing the, this idea for the interaction, basically, because as a static image is not good. Here it is good because the, the number of inhabitants <coughs> does not change so quickly. Here, instead of moving this ladder, you can, you can have a, a quick change and you can have some resonance phenomena in, 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 in the image. Okay, now we are done with the three simple cases, single attributes, two attributes, three attributes. We are going to deal with the multidimensional data. Multidimensional data is, a, is a, an hard problem. Here there is the simple somehow naive solution that we proposed 20 years ago. The idea is to having a, a dimensional scatter plot. So X, Y, and Z were encoding three dimensions. And after that, we have the, the sides of the points and the color of the points, reaching five as a result. And this is the book story in which you can see books in which the sides is the number of pages of the book. 
the color is the language. So in this case, we have a red that is, a, if I remember ben, well, French, blue is, is English, and there is one or two in Italian, but some people, very few of them. And after that, the three coordinates are representing price, publisher, and year. We will see that in action. You can project it on, on the scatter plot. That it, now each scatter plot is representing four attributes, four values x and y, size and color. And you can isolate points here as outliers to a very expensive book here. Written, sorry, read this Italian. And, and here, here you can perceive the distribution of the language inside this image and the number of pages, big books, little books. It, it somehow works. It's not the best, but it works. And now I would like to show, show you a demo of there, of this system, because even if it is uh, old fashioned and aged, it is a, a very fast, nice system for fast prototyping. And it was producing some beautiful images. I will discuss it later. Let me change the shading. Okay. I think that the remote people is looking into the new screen. Can you confirm that? Oh, I'm sure. You hear a very quick set of instruction for you. You, to start this environment, you have to start a MySQL before. I think there is something wrong with my, okay. Okay. Let's go for the screen. Desktop should work in any case. Okay. From remote, are you looking at the new screen now? Okay. You have to start my SQL. The problem resolution here. That give you a message like uh, you can close this window. And after that, you can uh, run. Uh, oof. Run dot bat. And you, you can have uh, there here. If you go here, you can select the database. It is self-contained. This is nice because you have all the data there and uh, you can add easily your data set. The point is that you, if you produce a data set in MySQL, you can put that in, in the folder. You can easily access and visualize it. Let's say you go for articles, so you have book, and this is the data set. You have title, authors, publisher, year, subject, language, pages, price, Amazon stars the rating of the books, too many. Hmm? You can run, uh, uh, you can do a select call. You generated the SQL query. You can even manipulate it. Hmm? You can rena rename attributes or whatever. And this is enough. And there is a, that was the, 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 the bet of that system to try to produce the best encoding. I, I wanted to just to discuss the, the idea, be back to the query to see what is the, the point. Now we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attributes. And they have five visual variables, X, Y, and Z, 
color and size. So you have to drop out for them. I will not visualize for them. So the first point. Second point, what is the, the best correspondence? I am going to map the title to color or to X. This, is, this question is still has not, no, no uh, real answer. This system uh, at inside, this is a, a automatic, uh, a, no, it's, it's the order. It is assigning the title to X, uh, the author to Y, the publisher to Z, the color to here. It's not using the sides, only for uh, attributes. Inside there is a, a let's say, a, a knowledge piece that knows something about the semantic of attributes. And pushing at best, there is a, an automatic rearrangement of them. They, for instance, is putting the language to color using Z and X for numerical values. I can add sides as well. And maybe I can add sides to the number of pages. And this is the result. It is nice, hmm? fun, you can rotate, you can do some 3D selection to restrict the data, you can filter the data, you can reset it, you can look up single value. Remember, this is one single book hmm? with all the details about the book, but of course, you have problem of occlusion, you can see something. You, you Here you perceive the fact that the price, the years in which books are located is more or less a very recent year, but you have to move it several times. You can ask for a projection on, on, on a two-dimensional two scatter plot, and you can inspect some data time by time one after the other in this uh, simple prototype. Hmm? For the time, it, it was uh, nice, hmm? somehow funny. And there is this wrong uh, so idea of, of the rainbow scale. And there is something that is said is still uh, interesting, in my opinion, the possibility of uh, obtaining visual cube, all up cube, clustering the data. For instance, I can go for, let's say, uh, for the publisher on the X, uh, from the Y, from uh, the year, nothing on Z. And uh, in each cluster, I can compute the number of attributes. And the other may be the average of uh, abundant stars. So I am clustering this data according to the publisher, the year of publication. And in each cluster, I have two variables that are the number of, of elements, how many books are there, and the quality according to Amazon's, Amazon star. I can apply it. Here we have the result. You can see the length of the bars is about the number of, uh, of items or books. You can select it, for instance, and you have uh, that it is about Springer. There are 400 books inside. And the average of Amazon is 2.8. And uh, it is an outlier somehow. But you can also get some nice spot. Here we have the color associated to the Amazon star. So red means very good books. And you can spot here a red here. An orange here. They are clustered, they are little clusters. You can zoom in. Interaction is a, is a mess, of course. You can click on it, maybe also because the selection in 3D is, is, is a, not as easy. It is a single book of, with Amazon Star 4.5. And you can also go, no, you can use the cluster. It is, let's say, the idea of this one is to select this cluster and I go back to points. And I will have all the points belonging to that cluster. Back and forth. 
till the system will crash for a bug because it is a bug. And you can go for, let's say, language. And that was totally new at that time. You have a, a visual three dimensional cluster in which uh, we are partitioning the data using the publisher, the year, and the language. And you, you, you can see big cluster, little cluster. The color give you the, the quality of the cluster. You can, we have to zoom to see more. We have orange cluster that are good story. Green is, is in the middle. You can select one of them. For instance, this one, only one in it. Something larger, let me try this one. We have only 42 elements. It can be back here. Something is wrong because uh, if I select, so select it and uh, zoom in, it was sorry, the, the, the command. You can expand it. You go to points and you have all the elements of the other cluster. But maybe you have got the, the point. Interacting with this system is not easy. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you, and you have already this uh, information uh, wired in, in, you can download this uh, environment from, from uh, Classroom. Under the file menu, there are some queries around hoping for not uh, having uh, crashing. Here we, there is some reserved data that I, did, I didn't put on, on, uh, on the shared file because they are the, 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 the antennas of uh, um, mobile phones spread in Italy. And with the real coordinates, that is a, a reserved information because uh, you don't want that bad people is aware of the precise coordinates of them. But what I'm doing here, this is nice. I'm taking a latitude and longitude <coughs> of this cell. I am plotting them on a bidimensional scatter plot. It crashed, as I can guess. Oh, no, it didn't. And this is data coming from Lazio. There is no geography behind it. But each point is plotted according to its latitude and longitude. Okay, to stop it. the system is slowing down because uh, this is in Java. But the point is that uh, you got the, it, uh, is that they resemble the Lazio shape. And the density of the points give you the, the idea of the, the number of people using the cells because they need, they need the more cells in, in zone like Rome. For instance, okay. I will stop it in a moment. Okay, you 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 can perceive room there, and you can perceive le less uh, less uh, user zone. I would like to stop it if I can. I want to show you another thing as well. Okay, I start again. This is a good workaround solution to restart. This is the killing, killing it and restarting it again. I want to show you this nice image from RoboCup. I assume you're familiar with RoboCup. That is a nice, here we are, you got the X and Y representation before. Hmm? Latitude and longitude give you the map of, 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 of the, the country. I have a data set about, I will show you about uh, uh, industry in the in USA. You can get the USA sheet with density, meaning cities with a lot of industries there, like the, the, the cell before. But this is really um, charming to me. This is uh, some data collected by a game. 
basically you have uh, the position x and y of the each robot on the plane. If you project on, uh, on green and red, you get the trajectories of the robot. Hmm? The color is uh, representing the speed of the robot. You can see that they can, in the red means high speed, not, not really a speed for that kind of robot, of course, high speed, let's say. You can see that they have to slow down during a curve. They can accelerate when they go straight on and they have to decelerate when they ch change the direction or take a curve. And what, what, and, uh, what we have in the, in the third dimension, the time. So these are trajectories at different moments in the time. Are, we have different time steps. So you can see what type, for instance, this, this one is a, a static robot. For different time steps, it is not moving from, the, from its position. You can, but the, we can agree that the, it is nice somehow, but we can agree that the, having some insight looking at this is, is, not, is not easy. However, I am still using this environment for just discussing the idea. How many variables we have here? We have three variables that are, that are the three axes. We are not using the sides, but we are using the color for the speed. And we had got some nicer representation. Very often I was using the dimensional representation because at least the interaction is not so, so hard, even if the memory problem will avoid me to deal with a uh, large data set. Let's say maybe. I don't know if that will crash the last attempt that I do. This is still about data about the cellular phone from telecom. Trying to, to track some events in Italy based on the density of a cellular phone. If you have a, a concert with a very big star, a lot of people will be in, the, in that square, okay. This is the idea, don't touch it because this is really dangerous from a memory point of view. You, you, you can see that, that um, you have the latitude and longitude, and you have the number of people connected to cell, basically. And you can see red spot, meaning high uh, values. And there is no geography on it, totally drawn by, 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 by just plotting the position. And you can encode a numerical value with the color. And you can distinguish zone that in which there is no, 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 no phone there, no, 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 no values, there are holes inside. And uh, instead here, for instance, maybe mountain. Hmm? And, and uh, it is somehow related to the geography because the mountain, you have less cells and less people there. And you can infer a lot of nice things, even if I can, I'm not able to deal with it because I, I think that it will, it will crash for memory reason. However, if you want, you can download it from from a classroom and uh, you can try to plot, to play with it. And basically you can use it for fast prototyping some visualization. I used the dirty image from Italy in a conference. I was dealing with a manager from telecom in a visualization company. I, I, I arranged that, 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 that example in, in, in 20 minutes, just downloaded some data from Excel file, putting it in my SQL and showing it. Okay. And the last but not least, I am a little bit, uh, let's say, of, I like this story because that it was the first contribution of our research group of industrialization a long time ago. It was innovative for some reason. You already know Gapminder. Hmm? Scatter plot, bidimensional scatter, but not the dimension. They know what we are doing with the size, color, and time. So we are a little bit above five. 
something like that. And uh, how far we can go? This is the point. What is the expectation that we can go with the X, Y, Z plus color plus sides plus shape? Maybe cube, sphere, diamond. Mm. We, we experiment that. In, in, in there, it still exists the idea of the shape, but we, we, never, we never used it. Patterns, orientation, they're not readable. Basically, when you reach seven, eight, you're touching the limit. This kind of approach, direct mapping of, of attributes can be five, six. I mean, the example we saw before are quite convincing. If you go for bidimensional scatter plot, you can add the shape, color, and size. Five elements, that's fine. Six, if you want, no more than that. After that, you have to change your mind. You change your approach. You need something totally different. And then we go for uh, new ideas. And this, these new ideas are a nice example of, of thinking, mm, why did I not get that idea by myself? It was so simple. Think of the relational model. You are familiar with the relational model. That was a, a, a code idea in seventh, using a, a simple mathematical model, the relation, a subset of the Cartesian product. And that, that idea influenced the old database story from that moment to now. It was a simple idea, very simple. And he is famous. The same for the parallel coordinates. Hmm? What is the limitation of 3D? Why we have only 3D in, in, our, in our scatter property like this? Because we want the coordinates being orthogonal each other. It makes sense because in this way they are independent and we can have a good representation. But if you remove this idea, why not plotting the, parallel, the coordinates in a parallel fashion? You have uh, the coordinate of price, the coordinate of number of bedrooms, and a single house is a line connecting two values. So an element here is not a point, it's a line. This is odd, this is strange, you, you think two elements like points, hmm? even with the size, even with the color, but each point is an element. But uh, I demonstrated you, I convinced you that you cannot scale. You cannot scale five, six, no more than that. This idea goes behind that. I'll show you soon uh, the, the story, but the idea is that you put all the coordinates in a parallel fashion, and you want to, when you want to plot a, an element, you have to plot a line. Look at this. Here we are presenting a data set with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attributes. A single element is a polyline. That, uh, this polyline is this value in A, this value in B, this value in C, this value in D, in E, in F, and G. And you can add as many parallel coordinates you want. You can go for 100 of them. But also this solution has problems. One problem comes from your eyes. You are still not understanding that you don't like it's new. Hmm? I remember my feeling when they got it the first time. By the time you will be familiar with it, by, by the time you will use it, and by the time you, you will start to let me add some reasoning. And um, you will recognize some patterns. What does it mean? 
having A and C connected in this way. What is the relationship that exists between B and C? Sorry? Portion? No. Proportion. Yes, there is a correlation. I value of B corresponds to I value of C. Low value of B corresponds to low value of C. If you draw it on, on, on the plane, it is a, a positive correlation. There is something in the chat. Same order. Okay. Uh, thank you for, for the, 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 the idea. Same order is better to express it as a correlation. This is A. No, this is B. Too late. This is B. This is C. And this is the situation that we have. I value of B corresponds to I value of C. Low value of B corresponds to low value of C. So they are positively correlated. What about instead the A and B? What is the relationship that exists among them? Inverse correlation. Hmm? High value of A corresponds to, sorry, low value of A corresponds to high value of B. And vice versa. That basically would be okay. Something in this direction. Hmm? So you can speculate on uh, correlation, inverse correlation. You can still maybe no correlation hmm? if you look to, to C and D. There is no rules about that. So I, I assume that they are scattered the points uh, on the plane among the two. But there is uh, another point. While uh, you can discover the inverse correlation between A and B, once you, you, you have to learn to reason on this visualization. Hmm? It takes time. But it is used, it is effective. So be, be prepared to use it and to understand it. Here there is a, an inverse correlation. Instead between B and C, there is a, a clear correlation. What about C and G? Low value of C corresponds to low value of G. You have to follow the pattern the path to get this information. And the uh, high value of C like this corresponds to, again, I value of G. If you do, if you do this game for all the lines, you discover that uh, C and G are positive, are correlated in a positive way. High to high, low to low, but you don't see it. Why you see that on B and C? Because they are close to each other. If you split them away, if I move G and I put the G closer to G, to, close to G, I will discover that, that, that relation. So the order of this, of this parallel coordinates is important, is fundamental. And this is a big problem because uh, how many permutations do you have here? What is the complexity of exploring the possible combination? It goes with the factorial. And factorial is not tractable. With seven, yes. With the 13, it requires, it requires days on the medium server. With the 15, 20 coordinates, you will, will wait years or more. So you have Typically, you have to use your hands and your brain. You can be faster. In fact, you will see that the D3 
the software for doing the, um, in JavaScript the visualization on the web, the implementation of parallel coordinates, you can get the block there. Marco Angelini will show you the story. Include the possibility of swapping axis, moving axis hmm, in a manual way. But dealing with this factorial problem is intractable. And this is a problem of parallel coordinates. Here we have an example. This parallel coordinates is about uh, cars. You have uh, <coughs> these attributes, uh, uh, the, the maker of the car, the mile per gallon, the number of cylinder, the volume, the displacement, the horsepower, the weight, the acceleration, the year of production, and the origin. Japan, uh, American, uh, Europe. This, this is categorical. You, you see, categorical attributes are a single point here. And you can use this story to discover something. If, if you filter the data, you can filter the data moving. The, how, how do you filter the data? On a scatter plot, uh, you, 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 you have the X and Y axis. You go, go for brushing if I have a scatter plot somewhere, somehow here. I can select the, the data drawing a, a square in this way. Hmm? A range in the Y and the range in the X. Typically, the interactor for brushing is a rectangle. Hmm? If you are interacting with this, you, can, you have to put a, an interval on each. coordinate. For instance, here we are selecting the cars in that interval. And uh, you will see that uh, in, in, in that time, most of them has only four cylinder. And they have uh, a good values for the consumption, high number of miles per gallon. If you do the same for older car, you discover the other way around. Because in 79, the price of the fuel was not a problem. And people was producing the eight cylinder cars. And you, you can see the inverse correlation between the number of cylinder, and the mile per gallon. High number of cylinder imply very low number of miles per gallon, and vice versa. And the, here, the Japan is a one of the main source um, or, or this, or, sorry, the other way around. You can discover that Japan is producing a little car with a few consumption. And you can see that some, somehow the, that kind of cluster. Hmm? You can see there are a few exceptions. Some cars with, a, let's say, six cylinder here in that time. This is the kind of analysis you, you, you can do on it. Uh, and sometimes you have visual cluster like this. Sometimes it's so crowded that you, do, you don't understand nothing. Uh, but it is one of the visual solutions we have in this moment to deal with an unlimited, potentially limited number of attributes. Heisenberg got this idea a long time ago. It's still discussing this story, maybe too longer for me, because this is a simple idea with a clean, clean and nice implication. And now it is well spread around as a possible solution. Think about it, look at to the slide, think, do we have to learn this idea that a single car is a polyline? And the, you have to learn that when you have a crossing point, you miss the identity. What I mean? I start from this car. This is car 32. It's a single car. I'm moving here. OK. I'm moving here. What is the exiting of this? I don't know. You can highlight this. You, you can highlight the single line. So basically, you, it is hard to maintain the identity of single elements. You can see fiber. 
grouping relationship between pairs of attributes. In this case, the selection, I like the color helps to look for all car in this period. You can go here, for instance, and select all the cars with six cylinders, having them drawn. You can see them here, but you lose them. The color save the, the story. So interaction and colors can help in improving the quality of this visualization. But again, uh, reasoning on it is not so easy. But in general, dealing with a visualization that is visualizing more than five attributes is a complex story in any case. I will be back on this uh, visualization uh, discussing some uh, prototype we implemented for cybersecurity. We will, show, we will have some seminar in this class showing you some result, modern result far away from the their story. Hmm? There was, 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 was a, a preliminary idea. In that time, the, the word visual analytics was not existing. Mm. And visualization was basically doing pie chart, no more than that. We got a strong period of 3D. A lot of people was crazy for 3D, but it was like this. In five years, totally disappeared. And now I'm going to go to something a little bit uh, hard because I want to show you it's possible to kill this one. No way. No, okay. Because I need to use prototypes, so it's better to share the, the screen. Radvids. Radvids is another another uh, visualization in which you can imagine that the coordinates are starting from a, the center of a circle. What is the idea? You take some data. This is about the steel cars. Mm -hmm. You can see the uh, mile per gallon, cylinder, displacement, horsepower, mm -hmm. still about cars. You take your data set. You have to normalize it. You do a min max normalization. So all the videos will be in the range zero one. And this zero one will act as a force pulling elements toward the anchors. These, these are, the, here we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 attributes in this case, more than before. This is the table corresponding to this data. You normalize it and uh, you plot points on, on, uh, on this circle, having the point position driven by the, the force pulling it. The stronger the force, the closer is the point to the anchor. I have you, I show you this example. I will be back on this. For instance, if a point has value 09, 09, 09, it will be plotted in the center because this, this value are pulling it in the same fashion. Hmm? Instead, if we have a point 01, 01, 05, 05 is stronger. So it, that point is pulling the point stronger than the other. And the point will be closer to this dimension. The advantage is, is that uh, you can plot uh, all the stuff uh, in a circle. Each single point will be a single car. You preserve the identity of the elements. You are not confused by line. Each point is a car. And uh, uh, roughly speaking, you, you can imagine that the point position reflect the intensity of the attributes. If a point is very close to an attribute, that means that that attribute has an inaugural value with respect to the other. Hmm? And uh, we back to this. I will, I will ask you to participate to our experiment. 
we are working on it uh, nowadays with, uh, with my visualization group. We published the paper this year. We are really, I am really proud of the results we got. We explain you not the paper, but the story. But at this moment, let, let's understand the visualization. Let's understand the, 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 the consequence of that. This is the normalized data. We have only three attributes for the sake of simplicity. For instance, we have point P6, that is 0, 03, 0, 03, 0, 03. It will be exactly in the middle. After that, we have a point P5, for instance, that is 0, 03, 0, 02, 0, 01. The strongest is the one, and in fact, P5 is very close to T1, closer than the other. After that, in second position, we have T2, that is uh, 0, 02. In the order 0, 03, 0, 02, 0, 01 are the, the strength of, 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 the, of the spring. So you see that the closest, the closest point is this one, the, sec the, the second one is D2, and D3 is far away. So this point, looking to this point, you can get the idea. I don't know the, the value, but I see I, I got the, the, the idea that D1 is the strongest, D2 is the second in second position, and D3 is the third, the third position. To demonstrate that the, it is not about the value, but it's about the proportion, let's consider P3. P3 is 0, 06, 0, 04, 0, 02. Is totally proportional to 0, 03, 0, sorry, to 0, 03, 0, 02, 0, 01. It is double. Hmm? If you double 0, 03, you get, you get 0, 06. From 0, 02, you go to 0, 04. 0, 01, go to 0, 02. So P3 is two times P5. It is plotted in the same position, exactly in the same position, because the proportion of, of the strength is the same. Meaning that uh, if you have a point in the, cent in the center that is 0, 03, 0, 03, 0, 03, a point that is 0, 07, 0, 07, 0, 07, will go in the same position. And we can conclude that uh, the higher a value of point P, the closer will be the anchor. This is the idea. Hmm? If, uh, if an anchor, if, uh, if uh, an attribute, as a negative value, it pull very strong the point in that position. And so if you look to this plotting, you say, oh, this point uh, is balanced, meaning that the strength of the attributes is the same. These points are dominated by D3 the because they are closer to D3. The so D3 the has a strong force to them. Instead, these two points are dominated by the one and the they are closer to the one, more or less, but also to the two are balanced, but they have a low value from the three. This is the kind of reasoning that you can, uh, can do using this uh, visualization. Uh, do you have questions about that here or in remote? This, was, this visualization is very effective because it is a scatter plot, the dimensional scatter plot. Very easy to see, very, see, very easy to interact with. You can touch the point, you see the single, the single elements, you can drag, do some brushing, selecting a subset. Select the, selecting a subset here is a mess. You have to interact with six axes, seven axes here. You can select a, a subset just drawing a square on, on, on the scatter plot, as you do normally. <coughs> and <coughs> let's go ahead a little bit <coughs> and try to figure out. I don't see the, the image. OK, here it is. This is the data set about cars. Hmm? 
you can see the points. And this is a scatterplot. You have around the attributes, hmm? the year of production, <coughs> the origin, my per gallon. You can see this shape. And you can argue that uh, these cars that are very close to the horsepower are cars that are really powerful, that have a, a power that is very strong with respect to the other attributes. Hmm? This is, these are balanced elements in the sense that uh, the value of the attributes is similar. They are close to the center, like this. Instead, this uh, origin is not a good example because it is a categorical value. But let's think about here. If you think this being very close to here, not here, here, the year of production, you can see that the value of the year is higher than the other. This is the kind of reason you can do on that. And this is used to see the, what is the advantage of this? You are looking to a scatter plot of a multidimensional data set. You can, you can perceive a cluster. You can say, oh, here there is a cluster of elements. Here there is another cluster. Something that in a six dimensional space is not possible. Try to figure out the cluster with six dimension. So it is used to produce a quick visualization. This is a bidimensional visualization, but it's representing the contribution of, of a, an arbitrary number of attributes. Is it possible to see the body of the No, it's not possible. It's a good question. The problem. And here I'm, I'm moving to the, the part that I am really proud. The implication of this solution, you think in terms of springs, you normalize the point, and the value are springs that are pulling elements toward that value. The closer, the stronger. And this, is, this visualization is around by 20 years, something like that. It's, a, it's an old one. And it is somehow complementary, complementary to parallel coordinates as advantages and disadvantages. I will discuss that later on. But uh, it has been used and uh, uh, understood in a wrong way. I am uh, one of the guilty as well. This year, I'm changing the part of my classes about this, this, this visualization because uh, during a, a couple of years of research, of our research with my visualization group, we discovered something new. We came up with a really, really nice solution and uh, we published the paper. We produced a new V3 plugin that you can use to go for this visualization that are not affected by the problem that I now am going to introduce. I think that you, you got the idea. The spring idea is, is very intuitive. And they move to this very provocative question. How long, and I use you as a test for my, my, my questions, how long a simple visualization will follow you? Present, com present company excluded, of course, as cosi presenti. It's intended to, think, to talk about the others, but I am including myself in the story because I, I was wrong. I misunderstood something. I overlooked something, maybe. And uh, I want to show you the wrong conclusion that you can get using this visualization. I give you the basis. Hmm? These two slides provide you the basic idea. Also, the, another point, also the normalization story is a problem because uh, mean max is not linear, meaning that you are distorting the data in not controlled way. And that is, is a source of the problem. But uh, I now I want to like to move in a in a, in a, in a tale in which we get rid of normalization, we use data that is uh, that range in zero one by nature percentage. 
Hmm? You can represent the percentage with a number between zero and one. Zero, zero five means 50% of something. And uh, this tale uh, is about uh, some missionary, with missionary that are going around by some island in Polynesia. And they are trying to show the visualization to these people that is not aware of the story. And the only information they are reporting, if they like it or not, aesthetically speaking. So they are talking about parallel coordinates. You know them now. And they go into island, island A and island B. And in island A, 70% of the people was liking that visualization. They say, oh, I like it, I like it, I like it. Hmm? Just not, not understanding the meaning, just visually. I like the visualization. Instead, Alan B said no. And only 20% of the people were liking that visualization. This is the data that I want to discuss now. So very simple. We don't need the Radbits for that. But I will use Radbits to demonstrate the kind of errors you can do in reasoning on it. You have this information. And now let's go with the, the simplest Radwitz that you can imagine. One point on it, only one point. This point is still reporting about, about island A and about island B. And it's about the parallel coordinates. Hmm? Uh, here is the point. And this, this point is representing some percentage like this. Hmm? Sorry, maybe it's better to have, uh, let's say. I can change example. This is a scatter plot because I used it before scatter plot. So you're showing scatter plot to these people. We call it a SHG scatter plot. Two to eyes and it's again. And we are plotting the result. The result, I remember you are two numbers. Percentage of people in A that, that like Scatter pot, a percentage in island B that like scatter pot. What you can conclude can, can conclude with the point in this position? <clears throat> oh, I put here some radial uh, circle to, to help uh, in measuring the position of, of the point. Hmm? And I say I can say that this is 0, 08. The point is 0, 08 here. And I ask you, may I conclude that 80% uh, of A like scatter plot? Or more conservative, <coughs> may I conclude that uh, a nine number, a nine number of people in A like scatter plot? What do you think about that? There is some truth in these questions. There is some uh, rational in that. <coughs> and we are talking about one single point, hmm? not a lot of point, not a lot of reason. Opinion, remote opinions, if you have. What I can conclude from this visualization with the position on this point here, what I can claim. Very good, very good. And we can measure that if you want. Hmm? Measuring the proportion between this and this, we can come up with the ratio of them. But these two statements are totally wrong. 
because uh, what we can come up is that the ratio between people in A lacking a scatter plot is nine times of people in B. If you do a proportion of this with this, you get nine to one. And that is the ratio. So one data set, no data set, one point, data set with single point, satisfying this uh, result is 0901. 90% in A, 10% in B will be plotted here. But also 009 and 001 we put in exactly in the same position. You can think only about proportion. On any attempt to talk about values is wrong. And I stress that in the teaching now, I stress that in this example, and I convinced you. Hmm? But uh, a lot of people is wrong about this idea. Is that clear? Is the example clear? Most of people will say, oh, A is a high value. No. The value of A can be as little as you want. The only constraint, it is nine times the value of B. I think you got the point. Okay, now you know this. How can you can solve this issue? Training a user or teaching better, as I'm trying to do this year, the story. Hmm? Maybe now you are convinced of that, or maybe you will never go in that error now. Hmm? So it is a matter of teaching or understanding or explaining. Now we go with the parallel coordinates this time, and we spread the parallel coordinates along A, B, C, D, A, F, hmm? pilot. And each of them has its own percentage of people that like that, that uh, uh, visualization. And you say that A, this is the point. Hmm? When you plot these uh, seven percentages, you get the point plotted here. And uh, my question is, uh, being A, the closest anchor to this point, can I conclude that uh, the value of A is higher than the value of the other points, or the other attributes? Here, I, we can answer yes with, with this example. It is closer to A, so it's greater than B. And uh, not uh, as absolute value, as proportion, nine times. Hmm? And I am, here I am asking the same question. Disregarding the, the fact that I'm talking about the proportion, hmm? So I cannot say that the, the value of A is the highest, is very high, sorry. But is, I say that is, is it higher than the, the other? It is the highest or the other, with respect to the other? I say it's a no. And they ask why no. Very, 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 very good. Hmm? The point is that, uh, as it happens in this example, if G and B are the stronger elements in the story, they push, sorry, they pull A, the point towards A. Here we have uh, a visualization of, of, of the value of the attribute, of the force. B and G have the highest value. And the other are very little but they are pushing the point closer to A, to A. A is the closest one, and the value of A is zero. 
the lowest you can have. Is that clear? The result is that. And uh, what is the source of the error? It's not a matter of understanding. Because uh, be careful, you cannot conclude, but you cannot argue against. You don't know. You don't know. Is because this point can be a perfect representation of the situation in which A is the highest or that the two points are pulling in a wrong position. You don't know which one of the two, you don't know. If you have to, you have to expect the data, the values. Here we discovered that it, 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 it's the case. How, how can I solve this problem? I can rearrange the anchors. Yeah, I changed the, the order of the anchors along the circle. Hmm? And uh, in this case, we see that uh, the point is very close to G and B. It is reflecting the truth because G and B are the highest values. And it is far away from A. Or oh, no, A is, is the, the farthest. It, it, it is the, the last one as a distance. This is correct. This point is perfectly representing the proportion of these attributes. While here, no. What I changed? Just the order of the anchors. So the order of the anchors can be a source of the, pro of the problem. And again, we are dealing with the a factorial problem. And by S1 factorial by two. Because if you change, if you have symmetry, it is the same. So the question is how to select the right permutation and how to measure this error. Because uh, while this kind of errors this interpretation like this can be solved by explaining better the visualization. This kind of errors can be solved only rearranging the angles. Be careful that it is, it is totally different from this situation. Here I said, I am not able to see the relationship between G and G. My, I am not saying that this is wrong. This is not able to convey a visual information. Moving G close to, to C, we reveal something visually. I am improving the image. But here, I am presenting something that is wrong. If the data is this, in this way, this visualization is wrong. It's pushing you to think something. So you have to arrange that. And how to solve this issue? We have the solution. We have studied the problem. We have worked on it for more than two years. We have a, a, not the perfect, but a very effective heuristic that is able to compute the, the optimal rearrangement. And I want to show you, if you connect this, this link, you can, you can uh, interact with the prototype, with the D3 plugin, basically. I go to for sharing uh, the desktop again. And uh, I try to go. Can you see it from remote? Do you see the website? Yes, thank you. If you go to this link, you go for the experimental environment. 
Here you have a data set. This is more complex. You look at this data and say, oh, <clears throat> what are the most prominent attributes here? More relevant in proportion. You say gross, budget, and screens. Hmm. Now, you know that is not true. You, you, the best answer is, I don't know. Hmm. You have an help. The color that we have here is measuring the, er the error of the position. So, Orange point are represented something to totally wrong. Light green is something better. If you inspect the point, you can see on the right, I cannot move the mouse, the, the force acting on, on the point. For instance, you see this point in the center is not balanced, but it's in the center because north and south force are just opposing each other. What is the best position for this point? I can ask. And uh, oh, I, don't, I don't know where it has gone away. Let's see. I can ask. Uh, we don't see it. We can ask for putting uh, each single point in, in each best position. Like the example we saw before. But what is really interesting, let me, if I am able to reach the, Oh, I, can, I cannot see the. Okay. This is the original data set. If you download it from internet, this is the order they provide. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 30, 13 attributes. It will take, let's say, two days to come up with the best arrangement. We have this our heuristic that is a in runtime. Now you see that the sentiment rating and screens are the winner. If you look on the right, you see that basically the mean force are in that direction. The color is reflecting the, the correctness of, of, the, of the position. So you, you, here you, you can do some reasoning. You say, okay, Sentiment rating and screens are predominating the, are dominating the data set. And uh, the points in green are in the right position. This optimization is a, a compromise. This is still wrong. You think that uh, likes is not so strong. Look, look at this. Likes, uh, uh, if, if, you, if you look at the, to the, to the upper part, likes have a very strong value also sequel is one sequel for that point but this point is here because the other force are pushing it away if you click on it i can ask optimize it. okay here it is now it's green is close to like so observing the data set just observing you say oh i don't like it the green is not enough you can optimize it oh it is good but this point is still not trustable and here you have other data set, you will be familiar with them, like wines or whatever. Maybe I can stop here for, for this, this, this story. Hmm? And, and uh, I am telling this to you, and, and I, we are going to have a long stop <coughs> for me and for you, <coughs> uh, for, for the lunch as well. I am really proud of this because some implication were so hidden in, 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 in the problem that the people around, I, I discussed it, I discussed it, this, uh, the story that I show with you before with a very ex expert person and it was wrong, not by you, like you, because uh, my two slides here, this one in particular is clearly pointing out the proportion is the point, not absolute value. But Casual user or you listening to me the last year will be fooled by the, this point. And that, that friend of mine, I will never share, <coughs> disclose the name, was wrong in both questions. And he is a very, a very good person in visualization. He does research in that. So we'll, we, po we point out some, 
some uh, hidden aspect of, of this visualization. We have a very nice solution for that. Oh, this is our realistic. This is the perfect solution. Computed by hours and hours of computation of our server. So this is the best you can do for this data. Better than this is not possible. It's probably only possible permutation. And this is our approximation. If you look to this number, you, 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 you can see that the, the value there is just 1% or something like that. We have some variability, but we are, we are very good in 99% of the cases. And you can download this, this plugin from, from GitHub, and you can start to use, and you have all this, oh, here we also, of course, implemented the, the, the swapping of the points. But in this case, starting from the original data set and to come up to the right order manually, is something that is not possible. And even the brute force is not enough. You, 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 have, you have to use our heuristic. It is very simple, by the way. The basic idea is very simple. After that, the implementation will be a little bit harder than that. So, and I'm concluding. Apart of being proud of this result, now I, can, I am convinced that your understanding of, uh, of Radwitz and the usage is better. And more than that, you can use it in a nice way. You don't, not only here you got the problem. This point is uh, positioned in a wrong position and uh, getting this in the general case, getting the, the right arrangement in the general case is, is not tractable. Now you have a solution for free that you can use. So I strongly suggest this year to put it as a, a rad bit in your uh, exam. Uh, even you have the, the software read, ready and you can trust, like, like we show here, you can trust your, your analysis. You, you can say, okay, I, I can, I can, and you can do even, uh, you, you can isolate points. You, you can see what is the, the, the real position of this point. And I, I think you go to the, the start. Hmm? I suggest to have, uh, let's say, 45 minutes of break. Hmm? Okay, we can start uh, 15, 15 minutes before two, okay? So, to better reach my goal of uh, having uh, a safe way of teaching uh, Radwitz, I would like to discuss another point that is uh, also useful for other classes and consideration, clusters. You, you know, in a lot of area, we need to compute clusters and we use them for uh, inferring properties, similarity, and whatever. And the Radwitz is one of the best means we have to produce a, a bidimensional scatter plot, presenting a way of identifying clusters. But there is a big issue that, uh, as far as I see, still has not been, uh, let's say, understood or well understood in, in, in a round. Let, let for a moment discuss about uh, close point. Here we have uh, P1 and P2 in Radwitz that are very close. Hmm? And you say, okay, they are similar because we are, our, our, our way of reasoning, if you, if you go for a, a standard, uh, Mm, Euclidean plane, uh, we say two points that are very close to each other, they, they are similar. What does it mean that they are similar in uh, Euclidean space? 
What is the, your definition of similar, your intuition of similar? Formally, how can you assess it if whether or not the points are similar? Hmm. Maybe that will... Yeah, Euclidean, Euclidean distance. Hmm? Basically, you, you do the difference between the two points and the Euclidean distance is used not only in the space that we can understand, like bidimensional space or two-dimensional space, but also in n-dimensional space with 50 dimensions. You can go for having the, the notion of Euclidean distance as a rule for similarity. And the cluster is done by several points that are close to each other. They are similar in a cluster contains points that are close to each other. They are closer to, to the centroid of the cluster. And for this reason, quality metrics about the cluster look for a cohesion of points in the cluster and for separation between two clusters. The better the two clusters are separated and the better a single cluster, each cluster is a strong cohesion, the better the quality of the clustering. And so we, we got the idea that in the Euclidean space, the distance is the notion of similarity. What does it mean instead that the two points in Radwitz are similar, are close to each other? It means that distance is very little. So we perceive a cluster in Radwitz as a set of points that are close each other. But my question is, what does it mean being close each other? What is the relationship of this closeness between P1 and P2 with the original P1 and P2 that comes from a dimensional space? In general speaking, the points that we have on Radwitz come from an n-dimensional space. What is the relationship among them? What is the properties that P1 and P2 have? In Radwitz, they are similar. They are, sorry, they are close to each other. The distance is little. What does it mean in, in the original space? P1 and P2, as here we have two coordinates, the dimensional scatter plot. Here P1 and P2, have a three, three values, or in general, n values. Hmm? What does it mean? It means that they are proportional. Two points that are very close in Radwitz, assuming that the arrangement of the coordinates is, 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 a, is the best one. They are similar. Look at this. P1 and P2 are very close here. If you look at them as a number, P1 and P2 are both of them dominated by the tree. And the other two attributes are similar. So we, you, you can come up, they are proportional somehow. In fact, the two points that basically coincide, like P3 and P5, they overlap each other perfectly. So little Euclidean distance in Radwitz means strong similarity of point, not a little distance. You can, you can have, if you remember the, this example, hmm. oh yeah, down. This example, these two points, 0, 9, 0, 1, 0, 0, 9, 0, 0, 1, coincide in radius, are on the same, the, the Euclidean distance is zero. But their equidem distance in the original space is not little. Consider that we are in, in a normalized world, it's high. 
So, if you see a cluster in Radwitz, it means that set of point are proportional in the original space. They have, they have the same versor, basically, the same direction. But Radwitz instead is used very often to separate the clusters. But clusters are physically close to each other in the original space. I'll show you an example, and uh, I'll give you an intuition of that. Let me move uh, to our Radwitz. Now with a better resolution, because I got uh, the way to not be forced by the projector to use the resolution that he likes. Okay. Here we are looking to the wine data set. You will be familiar with, with it because uh, we use it as a sample for dimensionality reduction and other activity. Just a moment. Okay. It has 13 attributes and it has three clusters. Here they are green, orange, and blue. If you observe them in a random Radwitz presentation, they are quite overlapping each other. If we, if we go, this is, the sorry, this is the original, the original disposition. Hmm? They overlap each other. Basically, you can imagine that all, all, all forces, you, you see them on the right, balance each other, and the points are close to the set. Hmm? If I ask for uh, optimize the, the, the arrangement of the anchors, I get some separation between green and orange, but it's still uh, the blue is overlapped with orange. The first question that I got when I saw that our technique was good also with cluster somehow, I, I thought, why? We are talking about proportionality, not Euclidean distance. They are totally different. And I come up with this intuition that is still something that I, I did demonstrate, that uh, the other way around, if two points are very close, they are also similar. If the Euclidean distance is very little, typically they are similar as well. As, as, as a direction. For, the, for this reason, our heuristic works in a decent way with the clustering. Uh, and I'll show you, here we have the, the, the cluster. This is the original situation. This is the applying our heuristic. And the, it separates, but not perfectly. And the, the blue cluster is still uh, as, having a problem. You see that uh, you can perceive the blue cluster more or less oriented versus proline, uh, proante, u, and od, whatever they mean, it doesn't matter. We have this feature that I did, didn't demonstrate before. We can select a, a wool cluster in this way, and maybe you no, I don't think that you see it. Um, you can see the, trust me, you can see the distribution of the points of this cluster. And, and it is clear that no one, no, no real dimension is dominant. They are spread around. In this environment, it's possible to ask for optimizing only the selected point. So if I select the blue points and I ask selected, I, we have to change the label because I, I, that was confusing myself. This is optim optimizing only the blue cluster. In fact, see if, you, if you observe the, the effectiveness, now this part is green, meaning that the, the blue cluster is in the right position. And in effect, the predominant dimension of the blue cluster are alcohol or D phenoli a flavonoid. And here there is the, this is the distribution that is according to that. What is my point? Is that uh, in the end, Radwitz can be used to visualize a cluster. Our technique improved the situation 
There are other techniques that are biased towards clustering and that works like uh, our, our as well. But it is important to understand the difference between Euclidean distance and proportionality. The fact, in my understanding, the fact that uh, our heuristic works in a good way with the cluster is something that uh, is because very often clusters are not only close to each other, but also proportional. Because if you have little, little Euclidean distance, you, you can have a, a more or less proportional point. And uh, for, for people that are, we, we use the, the plugin of our environment, this part on the right is not part of the plugin. Hmm? The plugin basically contains the, the code for drawing the, the rad bits for uh, allowing interaction with it, manual interaction. And there is an API allowing for uh, asking the heuristic uh, and computing uh, the quality metric. That is a, a very important thing because uh, being not a perfect optimization, we can see the points that are optimized against the points that are not optimized. The central part is still wrong here. Yeah. Hmm? And uh, okay. Now uh, I got the idea that because this, this class is very long, I don't want to talk anymore today of a, a representation. And I would like to change totally the topic. So that maybe will, uh, will rise your attention because uh, I think that uh, you are starting to like... Can you open that uh, this point again? See, surely. Let, 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 let me share it again. There is this uh, box plot. Yeah, this, this one. Yeah, this 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 boss plot gives you the distribution. Thank you for your question because this is uh, interesting. Basically, all this story is done by a compromise. Hmm? We will never get. Uh, let, let's go to the theory. Let's go to the original data set. This is better than this for discussing that. Hmm? This is the arrangement by the provider of the data. There is a table, and this is the order. Rating, gender, gross, this is the... And we have a quality for each point. The year is the legend of, 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 of the color. Zero is the best, meaning zero error. This is a, an error metric. The higher, the worst. Mm -hmm. So we have some points in green, some points in orange, some points in dark orange, so moving in this interval. How can you assess the quality of, of these points? With a box plot. This box plot, this box plot is reporting the distribution of the quality of each point, of the, of, of the points. So the median is zero, three. The maximum is, there are points very close in the green. The lower part is here. Look at the, at the box plot. If I go ask for the heuristic, it, it dramatically changes its shape. Now the median is very close to the maximum, meaning that 50% of the data is, is in, in this interval. But still we have points here. It's, it's a nice way to assess the, the average quality. Hmm? A, a, an arrangement, putting all the dots to green, putting the arrow to zero does not exist in, in practical cases. So it is, a, it is a compromise. That box plot allows for, for understanding the situation. And uh, maybe just another point. On, on the right, maybe you can see that there is a line on it. I don't know. There's two lines in, in, inside the, the, the class. This, this uh, polyline here is providing the, the numerical values of this point. This point comes from uh, a, a dimensional data set with 12 dimensions. So it has 12 dimensions in, initially. And this line here is representing that. 
Okay. In any, I am, uh, if you are more curious, I, I, because I am really in love with the story, I, I can give you more details. But my goal here was, I don't want to, to, to talk about my proudness. I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk in a correct way about Radwitz. I want to teach it in, in, in a correct way. 